Guys, I'm really excited for this one. Uh, the pound for pound king, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky in the building in MMA Hangout, fresh out of training. First off, how's the hand? We knew that that was something after your last fight. Um, how's the hand feeling? How's training going? How's everything pro progressing? Mate, everything's going good. Everything's going good. The hand's good. I've been uh, able to go full contact for probably like uh, four or five weeks now. Full contact. Obviously, I was training before that. Um, I see a lot of people don't, I probably don't realize that, that I was still able to train. Even with the cask, I was making sure I was on the bike, bust some ass. You know, I got a real good uh, team around me in Baymed uh, Performance who uh, made sure I didn't lose too much uh, strength in there. We had like uh, inclusion cuffs to make sure I held onto the muscle. We'll do, still do workouts. Um, so as soon as I got back into it, I didn't, I didn't miss, uh, you know, lose too much, which was pretty good, man. So uh, I'm very happy where we're at considering how long ago uh, it was. I was just in the cask, you know what I mean? It was like five weeks ago I was in a cask and there were five, six weeks ago. I don't know how long ago now, but um, maybe like six weeks, uh, I think. But uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible uh, how quickly I've been able to get back into it and feel good. And the crazy thing is, obviously you've been in this position before backing up a fight in 2019. Um, how is it different this time around? Obviously, you're trying to become the double champ. I think, personally, you will become the double champ. Uh, it's just a matter of, is it going to happen here? Uh, is it going to happen somewhere else? So can you talk about your mindset? It's almost I see you as like an NFL backup quarterback, right? You have to be ready to play in the game if your number gets mm -hmm. called. But right now, you're kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting for the unexpected <laughs> to happen. Obviously, Hamzat missed weight by eight pounds you know, last fight, anything can happen. Oliveira had missed weight already. Like, what's your mindset going into something where you're you're basically the backup? Yeah, man, it's a, uh, I'm, you know, that mindset that you're talking about. For like, obviously, it's pretty clear that I, you know, I'm, I may be built different to, to most people to even put myself in this position, especially where I'm at. You know, we talk about being pound for pound, um, you know, me deserving the title shot anyway. Do I need to do this? That's just, just how I am. You know what I mean? Again, I don't, I'm not getting any younger, so uh, mm -hmm. this is why I wanted this opportunity. So I'm com I'm committed to this, and that's enough for me. So in the gym, I am busting my ass. You know, I'm doing what I need to do, just purely the fact because I've committed to this. And um, when I got a job to do, that's that. It's easy for me to turn up. It's easy for me to flip that switch and be like, "Yeah, you're fighting." You know what I mean? I can still have this conversation with you and say, yeah, "There's a good chance I'm not fighting." Put me back in the gym. Put some pads in front of me. Put a sparring partner in front of me. I'm fighting. I'm ready. I'm preparing. I'm uh, I'm doing everything I need to, to to make sure that I'm in the best position I, I am uh, come fight night. So uh, mark my words. I'm I'm uh, I'm definitely putting the work in, and uh, I'm definitely making sure I'll be ready if I, I need to step in. Uh, you've talked about your training, and it's obviously difficult training for two different fighters at the same time. Can you tell us about the Shark Tank, about the meat grinder, as you call it? <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's that di difficult. Like again, for me, maybe I'm just a uh, built different. Like, uh, well, you are built different. Even when you I'm are built pads different. Pads listen, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, maybe, brother, maybe like, like, <laughs> listen, you're built different. Yeah. You used to lay concrete. When did you learn that you can? Okay, I can't think I can kill somebody with my fist. Like, how do you come up on like yeah. I can mess people up? Oh man, like I think uh, being young and silly and uh, doing enough of that on the streets, you, you learn pretty quickly that you know how to throw them. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Uh, Maybe that's where a bit of a comes. But, yeah, man, it's just – I don't know. Even this morning when I was doing pads with uh, Joe, so uh, uh, we were getting into the pads and he he will end up, uh, you know, going southpaw and that, like sort of mimicking and then level changing, doing all that, like, you know, being specific for Islam. And then uh, the next round he's doing, uh, you know, Charles, you know what I mean, he, on the pads, you know, with a little bit more upright, you know, things like that. And uh, obviously orthodox stance and, uh, you know, I'm – instantly just reacting i'm even getting guys training training partners that are mid rounds they're switching the opponents and i'm just able to switch straight away as soon as they give me one look i'm just that's just the type of fighter i am so again uh, if there's anyone that can deal with this type of position that i'm in um i think it's me because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the type of guy i can make adjustments like that and i've proved that and uh if i'm uh, if, if I, I need to prove it this weekend or next weekend sorry I'll show you this. The cool thing about you, Volk, is that you're such a humble dude, right? You're the pound for pound king, and you put yourself in positions that other champions wouldn't put themselves in, right? Obviously, with uh, 
with the UFC now going to Australia for was it 284, that's massive. I know for you, for all the guys that fight out of Australia and New Zealand, like that is, you know, that's home turf right there. Um, the fact that you would put yourself not in harm's way because you're again built different and you're just a completely different animal, but the fact that you're you're willing to put yourself at those lengths to get what you want shows that mentally you're just kind of like on a different plane. So when you're getting to the fight, right? Fights in Abu Dhabi, again, you can get it on ESPN Plus, UFC 280 pay-per-view. Uh, some say the best card of the uh, of the year, just top to bottom, the, the card is stacked, absolutely. So you'll actually have a pretty good seat to uh, to watch some of the best fights in the uh, of the year. Like when you get to the, to the arena, um, What's the pre-fight ritual? Are you going through all of your motions? Are you going through... What's the pre-fight ritual that you have to do to get ready to fight? So you're saying fight night? Fight night, yeah. Yeah, man. Like, uh, I we're, we're usually pretty chill, to be honest. Like, obviously, I get in my zone. Um, you know, we'll have a laugh. We'll try and keep it as a, as normal and natural as we can. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we tell ourselves... Well, I told myself, especially, that, you know, we're, we've got a job to do. So it's usually there's a... I start warming up and that's when I'm still going to have a laugh with the guys. But I mean, you still, you do see me get in my zone. I start to get in my zone once I start uh, warming up a little bit. And as you get closer and closer, um, I start to remind myself, you know, why I'm doing this and who I'm doing this for. Uh, obviously, my family, uh, my teams, my training partners, all the people that have, uh, you know, put their body on the line to get me ready. You know what I mean? Even the supporters back home, like everything, you know what I mean? All my supporters... I end up reminding myself that there's, you actually see me, there's videos of me even saying that, like I go, I do my like rounds in a circle and I, and I, I just, I sort of say it out loud and I'm just saying, they ain't taking that belt away from me. They ain't taking my belt from my family. Uh, you know, I put too much on the line. You know what I mean? I, you know, I just, I start like, you know, reminding myself why I'm here and why I can't lose and why I put in the hard yards and why I did what I had to do to make sure that that belt doesn't leave my side. Cause um, again, it's, it's not about me having this material belt, but what comes with the belt, you know what I mean? The success, the, the, the money, uh, the, you know, all that type of stuff, the legacy, all that stuff that that, that, um, that, that belt represents as well, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's what it's all about. I'm going, I can't let them take this all away from me. So that's my mindset going in there. It's just when I'm in the gym, I do what, what I do. Look, man, there's something that you know, we're talking about before we're talking about you know, the m mindset. So I'm right now, for me to put me in these positions, yeah, but, you know, there's a confidence there, you know what I mean? It's not cockiness though. That's what people need to understand and be like, like I ain't confident that like, oh yeah, I can do whatever I want. I can't be beaten. Like, you know, I don't even have to train. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not like that. Trust me, if you've seen the work I'm putting in, you know, that that's the difference. The the confidence that I have, but yet the the work that I still put in to make sure I'm 100% prepared. So again, a lot of people that are going to be cocky, uh, they're going to do less. They're going to feel like they don't need to do as much. They're not going to push themselves. They're not going to go that extra mile. That's never going to happen with me. I can be as confident as ever. Uh, put me in any of these positions. I guarantee you that I'm doing what I need to do to make sure I'm 100% ready uh, for whatever opportunity or whatever, you know, challenge is is upon or what's in front of me so that's just just how i am and uh, it's a uh, yeah i think that's again what, what separates me from a lot of the people as well you get a lot of guys that start to get confident but are they really putting the work in there that i'm i'm telling you i'm putting in more work now as a champion than i was as a challenger almost wow like you know what i mean it's just i don't know what it is i don't know maybe i'm sick in the head i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well you said it you said it you're built different but you know you know what i find interesting too is that when when you start reaching the levels of celebrity, of the champion status and all the stuff that comes with it, you've almost reverted to a hungrier mindset than than somebody who's already made it, right? Like it's it's easy. I, I'm trying to remember, I always forget the boxer quoted saying, it's hard to wake up in the morning when you're in silk sheets. I think it was Tommy Hearns or somebody. And it's like, it, it's true. Once you reach that top of that mountain, it's so difficult to get yourself out of bed and do the things that got you there. So again, we applaud you like, the fact that you're even taking this on is absolutely incredible. But we're going to shift gears here because I want to talk more about Volk the guy. We talked about Volk the fighter. I want to talk about Volk the guy. Check out the, the YouTube channel, Alexander Volkanovsky. You have some great stuff on there. Um, we were watching some stuff earlier. Um, you're, you're cooking with, Hos with Hosbill all of a sudden? Like, how was that experience? One of the biggest stars on the planet. Like, what was that like? 
Yeah, it was a, it's it's awesome. Like yeah, I've done a few cool collabs. Uh, you know, uh, I'm really enjoying all that type of stuff, and um, it's good. It's it's a good way to sort of uh, obviously branch yourself out because uh, a lot of people, as you just said, they see the you know, the interviews that you're doing for fights and whatnot. But then uh, you, you do the YouTube channel and all that. People get to really know all about you and like what you're all about. And what I and you talk about me just. You know how uh, you know, even though all this is happening, right? Like you know, I'm, I'm at the top and all that type of stuff. How am I staying so hungry? Or you know, how I'm still humble? Or still, you know, why am I still busting my ass? It's, it's because I'm still just a normal guy. Yeah, I'm telling you, while I'm having a, while I'm in the octagon and all that, and you know, preparing, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm telling myself, you know, I am the best. I can do this, you know, right, right. But at the same time, I go back home. I'm just a regular bloke. You know what I mean? Like, uh. Uh, I don't know. It's that uh, that underdog mentality that I've always always had uh, is really what makes me, uh, you know, the guy that just keeps pushing myself. You know what I mean? What I know now is not enough. Oh, that's just how I am. But I mean, it's really good, you know, not to go back to the fight of Hulk, uh, but uh, <laughs> let's uh, get back to what we we're just talking about. The human. Yeah, man, I want the just, human. That's it, man. Yeah, the, yeah, the human. I mean, that's just me, mate. Like I'm the same guy. You know what I mean? That I am. Uh, that I was ten years ago. Um, I love adventures. I love cooking. I love all that type of stuff. Now I get to just film and have fun with it, which is which is cool. You know, I mean, I see that there could be a bit of a future in it as well. There's a lot of interest in the whole cooking thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm claiming that I'm some sort of chef. I can't really cook like no chef, but <laughs> I'm a claimant and uh, see what comes of it. Hey, you, you can eat with the best of them. I mean, you did one with Action Bronson, who I love, by the way. Uh, one with Hasbulla that was incredible. Like, you're you're building yourself almost like – a personality. I feel like it's difficult sometimes for for people in the UFC to almost become a different personality outside of the cage, right? What's the moment mm-hmm. for you that you look back and you kind of looked around and said, holy shit, I can't believe I'm here. Like Lou said, like you were laying concrete, you're playing rugby, and all of a sudden, fast forward to this moment, right? The moment you're going to tell us that you were like, oh my God, I've made it to a place that I could never even imagine in my wildest dreams. What was that moment for you? I don't know, man. Like, I don't even know if I, I, I get them moments. I, I don't know why. I don't know. Like, again, I come home and then I honestly completely forget about it all. Wow. I think that's why I'm still the – that's why I, I am this guy that we talk about uh, that, that still has that hunger and still just somehow, you know, that, you know, people say humble and all that type of stuff. It's – I don't know. I think it's just the fact that I completely forget about it. Like, even now, to this day, I walk the streets and I get people go, hey, hey, hey Volk, what's happening? I think I know him from school. I think I know him from like wrestling. Like, how does that guy know me? And then I'm like, oh, hey man. I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, I don't remember this guy's name. Where do I know him from? And he's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm like, oh yeah, shit, the fucking UFC. I'm a fighter, thing. yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's the honestly, UFC thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just, I don't know. It's, it's just weird. It's, it's cool. It's really good. I guess I'm lucky. It's like that because it, 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 it keeps me feeling like I'm still this underdog you know what i mean and you know all the, you know what i mean it still makes me feel just this guy that you know i don't know it's hard to explain i still think of myself the, the same that i was like 10 years ago like that's just how it is obviously that, when that, i'm in the cage and i'm like yeah, i look at the belt and i beat guys like max holloway and i'm like far out then take me backstage i'm almost like oh yeah i'm back to normal me again i was like <laughs> sometimes i'm like i sort of like tell myself i was like fucking you know obviously i'm happy and i'm all, all giddy how good's that it was like you know, really enjoy this moment. Like, really soak it up. Like, look, realize what you've done. You know what I mean? But I mean, I quickly can uh, zone out of that. And like, obviously, I'm still on a high and all that type of stuff. Because, but at the same time, I'm just still just me. You know what I mean? I ain't. I ain't like you know. When I got this pound for pound status, you know, that did not make me feel like any better than I was the day before. I was. You know mm. what I mean? I'm just. It's cool. Yeah. I love it. Um, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. You know, like it's good to be recognize there's something like that, you know what I mean? Especially with uh, all the hard work I've put into this, you know, I should be able to gloat about it. But I mean, at the same time, I'm just the same guy as a guy I was 10 years ago. So you're a real down to earth guy or it's very scary what's happening in your head. So <laughs> I'm assuming that you were a menace on the rugby field. Uh, I wouldn't say a menace. But again, I've always been a pretty chill dude, but I mean, yeah, I probably got a aggro here and there. You could say maybe I did, you know, when I get, I'm competitive, you know what I mean? So, yeah, maybe I do get a little aggro, but I mean, I was always a pretty chill dude, but 
Yeah, I'd be lying if I said I haven't had a few blues on there as well. I've had a few fights uh, back in the day uh, playing rugby league. So getting, again, getting I've ready. always uh, I've always been known to be able to throw them, and I've always knew myself I could throw them uh, before I started training MMA. Um, what is if you could build the perfect fighter? Get all the all the different techniques together, right? You can pick from all the fighters in the UFC. Build me the perfect fighter. Build you the perfect fighter. Man, I wish I wish I was a, a cocky enough to bloke to just go, hey, you're looking at it. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Like, you know, one person that uh, you know, like again, anyone that could uh, I could say is like right up there. It's like you know, your Demetrius Johnsons. I've always been a big fan of him. He is so good everywhere. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Like, uh, Easy's uh, striking is just next level. Um, you know, uh, I guess you could uh, just pick off a few fighters. You know, if you uh, get 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 the the power of a Nagano, get your Easy sort of strike and my MMA sort of uh, fight IQ. You know, and then. Uh, you know, you could be wrestling or whatever it is. You could uh, chuck them all in, you know what I mean, and make the perfect fight of it. Um, you know, no one can be perfect. So I try and be as perfect as I can be by being as well-rounded as I, as I can be. You know what I mean? This is mixed martial arts, you know what I mean? People really need to understand that. You don't want to have someone. That's why I put in my MMA fight IQ. You know, you're going to get someone that's just a really good wrestler and then someone that's a really good uh, striker. That's not enough in this sport. You need to be able to blend it all together. So uh, the perfect fighter is uh, is uh, someone who has all them good credentials but really knows how to play what's in front of him, work game plans, work strategy, and really know how to work together. There's a few fighters that, uh, that do that well, you know, I think myself included. Um, uh, obviously, your Demetrius Johnsons, uh, your Israel Adesanya's, uh, and even obviously your, your, your Khabib's as well. Even though Khabib's was really more... You know, there was a direction in how he wanted to approach it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, his whole game, his whole strategy based around that. So he really made that very MMA specific. So even when he was striking and wanted to get it to the ground, the way he approached that was very safe, didn't take any damage, you know, did the right things to get it there. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's things like that that really make you a complete fighter, make you really dangerous and really hard to beat. Last question. Uh, let's say everything goes to plan that the UFC wants. You're there as a spectator. You're watching great fights. You got a great seat for the fight. What's the fight outside of the main event? Obviously, Charles Oliveira versus Asal Makhachev. Outside of that fight, what's the fight that you're looking forward to the most on that main card? Uh, Peter Yan and uh, Sean uh, O'Malley. I'm looking forward to that one. Obviously, there's a bit of a star power there. Uh, but it's not just that. It's a, uh, that's an interesting one, especially because it's three rounds, right? Three mm-hmm. round fight. Very interesting. Um, obviously, Peter Young is so well rounded, so good. Uh, but we usually know he likes to feel them first rounds out. I want to see, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that first round goes. I wonder if he knows, oh, this is three rounders. I haven't done it for a while. I need to go from the get go. Steps I need on the really, gas. Which, yeah. Mate, yeah, if he steps on the gas early, I think he would be a, a dangerous because he's so durable. Um, you know, he's he's a great fighter. So even if he does put the foot on the metal, like you know, I guarantee you he doesn't take much damage anyway. He is uh, he is that good where he could uh, really pour it on straight away and be very effective early and, and take minimal damage. Um, but won't put himself in bad positions because he's such a good scrambler and all that type of stuff anyway. So um, he, I think, if he does that um, and really brings that to his uh, to the table. But he's going to be one hard dude to beat. Alex Volkanovsky, the pound for pound king. Um, we appreciate you coming on and joining us on the MMA Hangout. We hope to see you on the live. Obviously, things would have to go wrong for either Oliveira or Makachev. We hope to see you. If not, hopefully we see you uh, with a double champ possibility in Perth. That would be massive for you guys. I know down there that would be a absolute home run for you to have the uh, the double title shot. They're uh, they're in your home in your home country. That would be insane. That would be incredible, mate. Let's see. We'll see what happens. I'll know a lot more by next weekend. Yes, so, sir. Uh, I'll, I'll 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 pretty much know what's happening by then. So let's see. Again, you can get your pay per view uh, tickets on ESPN Plus. Two eighty Oliveira versus Makachev takes place Saturday, October twenty seventh at Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi. First fight is at ten a.m. The main card starts kicking <laughs> off at two p.m. Uh, the pound for pound king, Alexander Volkanovsky. Thank you for joining us, man. We appreciate you. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll see you later. Yes. See you, man. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. See you later.